All right, guys, welcome back to uh, ATX BGC Monday Night Friendlies, um, where we do competitive battles against our uh, Discord channel, which is very fun. So this is our fourth match, final match of the night. It takes place between Chase and Ralsei, where we see uh, Chase using Kling Clang, which is interesting. Uh, Indeedy, Milotic, Rillaboom, Hatterene, Incineroar. Um, also, very obviously worth mentioning, I have Gemma here with me. <laughs> yeah, hey there, everyone. <laughs> I'm back already. Uh, yeah, interesting from Razi. Uh, we see uh, Palisand, Alolan Marowak, Primarina, Acelgor, uh, Porygon 2, as well as Indeedy. So I know that uh, one of the most like popular videos this week was probably Wolf's uh, Wolf Eclix, uh Water Compaction Palisand. I've seen a lot of those teams running around. So it looks like uh, Razi drew some inspiration from that team, and I'm excited to kind of see uh, to see see it in action. I've, I've seen some of the videos, but I haven't seen anyone use it directly. Oh, we're still seeing a BRB screen. Um, oh, we're good. We might be good now. It might just be super duper slow. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry everyone about the uh, the technical issues tonight. Uh, we are gonna try and reassess kind of what we need to change for next week uh, to make everything. A little bit better. I'm also going to resize this slightly so you can see everything. Yeah, so uh, Rossi's bringing a really cool, unique team here. Um, it looks very obviously uh, Heart Trick Room, which is very hard to use when um, uh, the opponent is using an Imprisoned Trick Room team. Yeah. Um, I don't know, though, that uh, Chase has one, however. Yeah, I, I, I'm interested to kind of see. Ooh, and it is a shiny Palisand as well. That's such a good looking. Uh black sand very like cool. no dark sand uh, uh dark sand, sand castle. castle yeah very cool all right so the the leads here are uh indeedy and cling clang versus the assault gore and um the uh <laughs> the sand castle and interestingly enough that assault gore is psychic seed so it's able to get the spadef boost immediately from uh chases uh indeedy so i think that's an interesting interplay to see on this turn one yeah, this is a very strange uh, lead coming from both sides here. Um, something I'm unfamiliar with, especially coming from Rousey's side of the field uh, with the Palosand Excelgore combination. Those are two Pokemon that you don't very commonly see in this format. Yeah. Um, along with along with the Kling Clang, also. <laughs> For sure, I think we're about to see some interesting interplay. So what wants to happen typically here is um, Excelgore uses Water Shuriken into the uh, water compaction palisand and it's able to raise its um, its defense by three to five stages. Um, but in this case, uh, Chase kind of correctly calls that and goes for the follow me. Um, looks like Razi was not tricked by the follow me as well and is able to go for a struggle bug and earth power into that NDD. Potentially targeting down that clang clang for super effective damage. True, yeah. I, that that might have originally been intended into that clang clang. Um, that Kling Kling getting a shift gear off, it's going to be uh, faster and hit harder, so this will be interesting to see kind of how much damage. I don't know my Kling Kling Calx. That, that's a, that <laughs> is a mouthful, Kling Kling Calx. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it'll be inter like, it, it's a very interesting Pokemon. It's one that, like, um, is one of those, like, Gen 5 uh, mirror Pokemon to Gen 1, where it's supposed to be, like, the Magneton replacement. Um, but yeah, we are going to see the Dynamax come out here from that Kling Kling. And uh, I'm, I missed the targeting uh, while Chase was selecting, but I have a feeling it's going to be doing some pretty big damage into um, that Excel Gore. I believe it did target down that Excel Gore as well. Uh, but we do see another Max here coming from Ralsei's side of the field as he's got that cool fedora on. Yeah. Very, uh, very good looking outfit for <laughs> both of the trainers. Uh, I know that Chase has already gone through the entirety of the new wardrobes from the Isle of Armor and uh, yeah, wishes so there was more. So we see the so power sand. See get that the, uh, the biggest sand castle we've ever seen, and the water shuriken <gasps> is going to target it. Wow, and it looks like uh, Razi made that call correctly that uh, Indeedy was not going to be going for the follow me on this turn. So, depending on how many, uh, it and also gets the weakness policy. Yeah, this <laughs> is a very, very bulky, and it's going to hit pretty hard on that power sand. Yeah, yeah Rollco, so that was a pretty incredible read right there. <laughs> So, roller coaster, uh, yeah. Roller, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Rosy predicting that uh, Indeedy was not going to follow me there is massive. As I mean, Rosy's going to be able to do so much with this. Yeah, this Earth Power into presumably this Kling Kling is going to do a lot of damage. 
an expanding force, not really doing a whole lot into that palisand. I was going for the max overgrowth to override the terrain. Interesting. <laughs> Rossi's doing some uh, really unique stuff here. Yeah. Uh, but you love to see it. I don't think that Kling Clang really has a whole lot for the palisand, as we saw the max lightning on it. Um, so yeah, what, what are your thoughts coming from here, Gemma? Yeah, and at this point, uh, Rossi being able to get that strategy off with the water shuriken, I, fist I, I uh, missed exactly how many boosts it got from that water shuriken. Um, I believe it was two or three, uh, but that might come into play given that this Kling Clang is boosted. I think it was two. Um, water shuriken, so it would be a plus two, plus two, plus two defense, plus two uh, attack, special attack. I think it's uh, Palisand is physical, right? Uh, Palisand is a special attacker. Okay, yeah. I, um, but I, water I don't compaction think I've ever seen gets Palisand. yeah, water compaction gets a plus two to physical defense. So uh, we do see uh, Chase here going for that raw hypnosis into um, that Porygon two, trying to shut down. Um, the possibility of Trick Room, uh, I think Chase rightfully knows that depending on what Rossi has in the back, uh, a, a Lolan Marowak could kind of wreak havoc in the end game here. Now that that uh, Indeedy is gone, there's doesn't appear um, there's going to be a whole lot of resists uh, to be found. Um, I missed exactly what he targeted there, but he goes for the Steel Spike. It's like into the Porygon too. That it's does quite do... a bit of damage there. Yeah, that's about 60%. Also getting the defense raise, which is uh, not going to be super helpful against this palisand. So we see a horrified Oof. chase in this position, uh, going for a blind hypnosis from the Milotic uh, into the palisand slot. But unfortunately for Chase, we do see the hypnosis miss. Yeah, that raw uh, hypnosis. Uh, you know, 50% is a, a decent uh, odd, but um, it's it's hard to rely on when that's your win con. And I, I think here we're just going to see a Porygon 2 get up that trick room. Oh, we're getting a little bit of... Okay, there it is. <laughs> we do see the Trick Room go up after the uh, Palisand targets down that Max Kling Clang, and the Kling Clang goes down from the Max uh, Quake. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of damage, as well as boosting the special defense. Uh, you know, uh, Razi's in a really good position here because uh, given the fact that I think the only attacking move most of these Milotics that carry Hypnosis have is Muddy Water, all it's going to do is be water compaction absorbed up. Um, so it's pretty pretty safe to assume that uh, Chase will continue to either hit uh, that Hypnosis or another of his moves. Yeah, so we've seen at yeah. this point, uh, oh, we see the Mystical Fire going for the special attack drop. Interesting play from Chase. Oh, I'm, did I lose you, JD? Uh, showing the fact that uh... He does have Focus Sash. Uh, I'm still here, Gemma, if you can hear yeah, me. Well, I got you now. We, um, we froze there for a second. And we do get the uh, Milotic competitive boost after the Max Phantasm goes off. And the Porygon 2 just clicks recover. So Chase still has a little bit of life here. Uh, it's not fully over, but he's going to have to do a lot more to this Palisand. Yeah. As we do see the Hypnosis go off and it lands. So there yeah. is some life here for Chase. Yeah, interesting play. I was kind of, uh, I mean, I know that um, Rozzy really wants to operate in Trick Room, but it felt like maybe the play might have been to go for that max overgrowth into the Milotic to clear it from the field to avoid having to be hit with the Hypnosis. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. But yeah, yeah so I... how do you think Chase can step back and turn things around fully? He, he put himself in a little bit of better position, but I think it's still leaning towards Rousey here. Yeah, I still give the... Uh, it, there's not a ton uh, that Chase has that can hit that palace and super effective is the main problem. Um, he can continue to be a nuisance with Hypnosis, but for right now it really looks like... Oh, an ally switch. Interesting. Uh, interesting reveal there from Rousey. Um I don't think that this is going to go exactly how Rossi wants, though, with that mystical <laughs> fire, Actually, yeah, dropping <laughs> that palisand back to neutral. I think that that's one way that Chase can start to get back in this, um, as well as getting that coil off so he can have more effective um, more effective hypnosis when uh, the trick room expires so that he can shut down a second attempt at trick room. But, um... Palisand there after, after it wakes up. Yeah, exactly. Being able to, to put it back um, 
you know, in, in a in a rougher spot. We also don't know what the fourth Pokemon is yet from Rozzy. We have not seen it. Um, so that really will kind of determine what the... Uh, wow. Yeah, that Mystical Fire. Oh, we get a crit there with the Mystical Fire picking up about, like, what was that, about 20, 30%? Um, yeah, roughly. Continues yeah, we to do take see the Ice Beam come in from to going into the Hatterene to take it out. So Chase is just going to have this Milotic left versus three of Ralsei's Pokemon. We do see yeah. a Coil come in. Unfortunately as well, uh, it is it is a plus one, but that, uh, you know, the water compaction ability on Palisand is going to make it pretty tough. Um, you know, we might end up here in an extended uh, uh, stall battle, but um, I, I forget exactly how. I believe it still, no, it does still take damage because the weakness policy procs. So depending on how much um, a muddy water does, uh, additional defense doesn't really help um, Rozzy at this point with only a special attacker left on the field. Yeah, so we did see Chase click muddy water there. I'm kind of curious to see what it does hit. We do see the ally switch come from the Porygon too, but that's not going to make a difference as we have a spread attack here as the Palisand does wake up. Oh, wakes up and gets the Giga Drain off. Not doing a lot. <laughs> That's uh, a minus one Giga Drain. Is it at and minus non, one or is it neutral? I think it's at minus one. Uh, Chase just checked the screen. Yeah, that's true. And it yeah. does take out the Palace Hand. Ooh, and it gets the accuracy drop onto the Porygon 2. Um, I don't believe that Porygon 2 can miss Trick Room if that's uh, what it intends to do next <laughs> turn. <laughs> but unfortunately, I think it's going to be pretty tough to set up in the face of a Milotic that's got a boost. And here is uh, the Alolan Marowak, which I was presuming is the last uh, Pokemon. So we'll see kind of what, you know, Chase here being at plus two attack, defense, special attack. Um, he's in a pretty decent position in terms of boosts, um, as well as that Marowak really kind of being safe. Or uh, it, it doesn't threaten the Milotic a ton this turn. Yeah, so Chase clicks what seems to be his uh, wind con here and puts that Porygon 2 to sleep as that Porygon, or uh, the Alolan Marowak doesn't attack and it chooses to protect instead. Yeah, I, I think that that more or less seals it for Chase in this case. Um, I don't believe that this Alolan Marowak's going to live a plus two Muddy Water uh, into, um, you know, the, the, the Porygon 2 doesn't have anything that can KO the Milotic even if Muddy Water doesn't do a ton of damage. Yeah, so very impressive game one there from Chase. Um, yeah. I mean, Ralsei played incredibly well, but uh, I'm very surprised at the massive comeback there from Chase's side of the field, as it looked like Chase was just kind of down and out for the count, especially after that first hypnosis miss. Yeah, exactly. That was uh, some really expert positioning and playing from Chase, being able to preserve Hatterene, um, get the timely, I don't know if they were the calls or um, just getting lucky with the ally switches. Um, on getting the drops onto Palisand in terms of lowering uh, the special attack, but uh, really well played by both uh, <laughs> by both trainers there. Um, that read on the Palisand uh, water shuriken was incredible, um, and Chase's recovery uh, also incredible. So, uh, given what what uh, what happened there in game one, what would the adjustment be if you were Rozzy? Uh, I would probably expect to see some different leads coming from Rozzy, um, just because Chase has kind of seen it, and uh, Chase being the player that he is, he's probably going to be able to play around that. Um, that being said, though, I think maybe something like an Indeedy, um, he, he wants to set Trick Room real bad, so maybe Indeedy, Porygon 2, and then have something in the back, like maybe that Palosand um, mixed with like an Alolan Marowak or a um, uh, Water... Uh, what's it called? Primarina. <laughs> there we go. There, yeah, that's, there, that's, yeah. that's it. <laughs> that's the Pokemon. Um, yeah, no, exactly. I think that this would be... This This is an interesting set. Uh, if I'm Chase, I'm not sure that I even changed what I did to start. That Kling Kling was able to kind of get some big damage. The only thing I might do differently is, in the face of um, a Selgor, just continue to hit follow me. <laughs> um, uh, especially when there's that threat of that. Uh, weakness policy and a plus you know, two to four defense um, with, you know, Chase's main form of damage being that Kling Kling. Uh, he wants to be able to hit super effective, or he wants to, he doesn't want to have to deal with like plus four, plus six in terms of defense boosts. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So our players seem to be taking our time here, um, selecting their four. Uh, yeah, Chase just picked 
um, and Rozzy still hasn't quite finished. Yeah, uh, I think Rozzy might kind of be looking at I, I, I It might be interesting, too. I, I presume that that Primarina might have something like Aqua Jet specifically for his own water compaction. Um, but the Primarina, you know, could do some interesting things. It, it, it gets walled by the Kling Klang, which is why I might leave it on the sideline. But we also know Primarina is an incredibly powerful Pokemon. Mm -hmm. so we see and Chase does have the Rillaboom, too. Yeah, is what, yeah, and that's just a hard counter. <laughs> um, so we do see uh, the same leads from Chase, but we see a switch up from Rozzy, Porygon 2, and Alolan Marowak. What are your thoughts about that, JB? Um, I like it, but I'm not 100% sure how I feel about the lead with Alolan Marowak, although it does work out in Rozzy's case here, as he would be able to just go for a target down into the um, Kling Klang and set the Trick Room up at the same time as Chase does not have a Taunt user on his side of the field at the moment. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I think it'll be interesting to see kind of what the decision, uh, he could even opt to max if that's what he wanted to do, uh, Razi. And there's not a ton that's threatening damage onto the Marowak. And so really good leads forcing a double switch out from Chase um, and, and forcing Chase to pivot into his, you know, more passive and uh, defensive mode. We do see uh, the uh, Psychic Seed. Ooh, interesting. Bone I, To be honest, Gemma, I actually like that play a lot. <laughs> um, one thing I was actually thinking about as they were clicking their, their moves for this turn was it would have been interesting to see the Alola Marowak actually max and then use max grounded to the Clink Clank. Yeah, that uh, that was interesting, and I don't know if it had hit one to one or two more times, that could have taken out the uh, the Hatterene. Um, but we do see here that uh, <clears throat> Chase is just going to start to position himself into his kind of bulky stall, um, you know, using that Milotic as a wall. It's also a deterrent to a max from the um, Alolan Marowak because you don't want to go for another Max Phantasm and give it an attack boost. Um, you don't want to proc that competitive, especially when it right. hits you super effective. Wow, and we don't see a protect here from either side of the field um, as that. Wow. Oh, there's no item anymore on uh, the... I think that Rozzy might have missed the Psychic Seed proc onto the Milotic. Uh, Poltergeist uh, only works when there is an item on the Pokemon, and yeah. in this case it didn't have one. Wow. Very unfortunate there, yeah. Yeah. So in, in that case, honestly, if I mean if it's strong enough, then maybe go for a Max Phantasm into the Milotic. I know yeah. if it if it doesn't die, you, you boost it. But in this case, if it, I don't think it can Oko, so I don't know if that's the right play. But yeah, yeah. I also think it's also uh, it's a plus uh, one defense as well from a coil. Um, yeah. So I. You really don't want to have Dynamax that Pokemon there at like oh, what no. it looks to be like 15 or 20 HP, um, only f only to give them an attack boost. Mm -hmm. um, but interesting, uh, interesting turn of events there. One of the uh, you know new move tutor moves we haven't seen a ton of interplay between. Um... Wow! Oh wow, that is powerful. So we see a, a massive Flare Blitz coming in from the Alola Marowak, targeting down. The Ndidi taking it down, falling to recoil damage, and now all we see is a Porygon 2 going for Ice Beam versus a Milotic, who is going to coil again. Yeah, continuing to boost that, um, continuing to boost that uh, defense accuracy. and accuracy. So um, at this point, uh, if Palisand's in the back, you're in a pretty good position if you're a uh, Razi. Because you can go for a max overgrowth or a max ground, depending on which you feel more threatened by. Um, as well as you have the ally switch game, mind games. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, kind of interesting. I know one thing that the AT ATX VGC gang likes to talk about a lot is the uh, the strong the strong feeling of uh, dual ghost types in VGC format, right? Yeah. Well, Rossi's bringing it, but it's not your standard dual ghost types. <laughs> yeah, we, we're seeing a brand new double ghost core emerge in Alolan Marowak and Palisand. Um, yeah, so it looks like uh, Chase is going to be uh, trying to guess the ally switch. Presumably, he really wants that Palisand to fall asleep and not uh, the Porygon 2, because that Porygon 2 is not threatening any damage onto his Milotic. 
Oh, we don't see. I'd really like. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know. I was gonna say we don't see a Dynamax from either player. That's very surprising. I, I was gonna say I'd really like to see a Max Overgrowth coming from uh, the Palos Hand here, going yeah. into the uh, the Milotic. Yeah. And and no it is gonna connect. It is a plus two, so that's a hundred percent guarantee connect on on Hypnosis. Um, but it targets down the Porygon and not the Palisand. So in this position, um, I believe we've seen all of... I don't I don't know if all of Chase's moves have been revealed, so I don't know um, if maybe Razi was trying to read a Protect on that last turn from my Lodic. Um, but at this point, it feels like he really has to take out that my Lodic before um, it gets a chance to put him to sleep, so... Um, he does appear to be in a slightly better position as um, there are no boosts on the Milotic and uh, its um, water compaction will just boost its uh, physical defense against the Kling Kling if uh, Chase happens to go for a muddy water here. Yeah, so we do see the Palo Sand Dynamax here and once again we are seeing this beautiful massive sand castle. You love to see it. The shiny Palo Sand is beautiful. Um, yeah, so the Overgrowth is coming in, going into the Milotic slot, and it should be enough. Um, that does that hardly does wow. any damage. What's going on oh, with that? the Psychic Seed. Uh, the Psychic Seed that boosts uh, the special defense yeah. and that hasn't been a proc yet of the weakness policy. So I think what we're seeing is Palo Sand can be incredibly uh, powerful when it's supported correctly, but in this case... Uh, not doing a whole lot of damage, and now just giving passive recovery back to that Milotic as well. Yeah. Um, as Chase offs for the shift gear here uh, in what I believe is the last turn of Trick Room, so boosting his attack, boosting his speed, so that when he comes out of Trick Room next turn, he'll be able to deal out pretty massive damage. Or, I'm sorry, yes. I miscounted. No, Trick Room is up. Yeah, Trick Room did expire. Yeah, so uh, Chase just looking at two Pokemon that are sleeping right now. Um, do you think he just goes straight for the muddy water? I don't see why not, other than the fact that Palosan is maxed and at full health. Yeah, the only issue with that is you know it's going to proc the weakness policy, um, and you just kind of want to deny that weakness policy. Like, get the damage where you can with that um, Kling Kling into the Palosan and avoid um, giving boosts to the Palosan until um, Kling Kling's kind of done what it needs to do. So that Steel Roller is going to come out. We see about 60% damage, overriding the Grassy Train, so no more passive recovery, no more boosted ground moves. Milotic just goes for a recover. Interesting. So, uh, kind of curious to see if this Porygon 2 wakes up and sets Trick Room again. Wow, Ooh, and it does. It does. Beautifully Spoke done there by Rossi. existent, yeah. That, <laughs> that was... So this, now, depending on the Palisand sleep turns, is really going to come down to kind of how impactful things are going to be. Um, so we'll see, you know, Chase yeah. still has yet to use his Dynamax. So that's worth well, noting. It's kind, of, it's kind of interesting here. Uh, the only thing in less maxing uh, that the Kling Clan can do is Wild Charge because he used Steel Roller and there is no terrain on the field now since he Steel Rollered it away. Yeah. It's an in interesting uh, set because he's able to set his own electric terrain once he maxes and then can proceed to steel roller it <laughs> away. Interesting. So we see that uh, Hypnosis Connect and uh, Kling Kling being the fastest thing on the field moves last with the wild charge. Wow. Oh. It does damage, but uh, the real benefit was the fact that Palisan uh, took a second turn asleep as opposed to waking up turn one. Uh, from here, now uh, Chase is pretty free to decide when he wants to Dynamax. Um, he's facing a Palisand with absolutely no boosts on it, no special defense, no defense, no um, special attack boost. So it's not really threatening a ton of damage into either of them. Uh, an Earth Power might do some, might do a decent chunk. So uh, we see the Protect come here from Kling Kling. Interesting. So it looks like. Chase really wants to position and max that Kling Kling when he knows that the Palisand has uh, taken its first um, till it goes back to sleep. He doesn't want to operate under Trick Room moving last Dynamax. 
Yeah, interesting. It seems like our players... Oh, I think I might have lost you there. It's Nibs. gonna be a lot of passive play as the... Uh, the pa Palosan wakes up and goes for the Earth Power, targeting down the Kling Clang and taking it out. Yeah, it gets the one hit KO on the Kling Clang. Uh, that's pretty big. Uh, presumably that was what uh, Chase was thinking that he wanted to Dynamax at this point. Um, you can continue to uh, uh, Hypnosis um, both of Razi's Pokemon, but at some point he's going to have to try and go for damage. He's going to have to go for that Max Geyser. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's so we have a one. We have a one attacking. Um, one one attack my Lodic about the max and just do it. Yeah, so with kinda absolutely no boosts. Kind of unique here. We have Chase gonna go ahead and max uh, Geyser into the Porygon two, setting up its own rain, and then potentially targeting down a um, water compaction Pokemon. Yeah. Did I say that right? <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Yeah, that's the name. It, so it's worth noting that it will still do the damage um, with water compaction. Um, so it will still proc the weakness policy. But um, I think that this is a really smart move, giving yourself the rain, giving yourself the ability to do more damage when you get out, um, when it's in rain, with that Max Geyser coming off of muddy water. Also, now Trick Room is up, so um, Razi's in a much better position. I think as long as Chase can play around the weakness policy, he he just wins. So basically, as long as he takes out this Porygon 2, and then whatever is in the back is able to be handled without touching the Palosand or continuously putting the Palosand to sleep, I think Chase is in a great position. Yeah, we've seen that Giga Drain does not do enough to kind of outpace um, the recovery from Milotic. Oh, and we see the Acelgor come in. Razi says, enough of this uh, dancing around while me waiting for you to give me a max uh, water compaction. I'm gonna bring it in on my own and it's gonna go down immediately. So uh, unfortunately, no no setup in this game for Razi to get that water compaction up. Um, so I don't know, This really it's gonna come down to is a max geyser enough to take out the Palisand? You know what'd be kind of uh, kind of different there if, if that Excelgor has Final Gambit. Is Final Gambit legal in VGC? You know, I'm actually not familiar. Uh, I don't believe that there are any moves that are uh, banned specifically from VGC. Um, just Pokemon. Uh, so if it's a move that it can learn in this generation, then presumably it's a legal move. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it that it does get it. Oh, and the Porygon 2 lives. <laughs> Palisand gets the wake up. It's gonna get... Wow, that does more than I expected. That was a and crit. Gets the critical hit. So unfortunate. Oh, and a wake up from Porygon 2, and it's going to get the trick room off. So now uh, this Milotic will be the last thing moving on the field um, with a move, a spread move in the rain that I don't think is going to do enough to KO Palisand. It's just going to proc its weakness policy. So uh, presumably Chase's win count is just to continually put things to sleep, try and stall out trick room, and then uh, only proc the weakness policy when it's um, at a point where uh, it's one v one. Yeah, and he and he has it asleep. So I, I know that that's his general game plan uh, from watching this. But Razi is just gonna be able to recover right here. Hypnosis comes out from the Milotic into the Porygon two, and it lands as it is now one hundred percent accurate after the plus two coil. Yes. Uh, so we are. It feels like due for a pretty long game here. Uh, there's okay. still th three more turns of Trick Room. There's still about four minutes of match time, or uh, sorry, of, of your time for Chase, and it looks like two minutes and 53 seconds for Razi. Um, we could be seeing an attempt to take this to timer, but at this point, Chase is behind by, by a whole Pokemon, um, and I don't know, given that Porygon 2 has access to recover, uh, I don't think he's going to be able to fully stall it out. This is pretty interesting here, as uh, Chase is going to eventually be forced to Muddy Water, and maybe last turn might have been when he wanted to do it, but also I'm not sure because as soon as he triggers that weakness policy, it's it's going to be really tough to um, take too many Giga Drains from the Palosand. 
Yeah, I, I think he only wants to proc it, potentially if he can get Porygon 2 within range of a KO, um, and somehow take it down that Palisand by moving last. And when we see the Shadow Ball, oh, do you think that Chase was presumably trying to stall out the Giga Drains? We see the critical hit on the Shadow Ball doing more damage, but um, I have not counted the Giga Drains in this game, and I'm unsure if... Uh... I don't know that that was necessarily... Um... Uh, Rousey running out of Giga Drains there, he might have been fishing for this Bedef drop. Yeah, that's a dangerous game to play against uh, Milotic, though, because if you get that Spadef drop, you are also going to give it that competitive boost into the last turn of Trick Room. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. So, uh, presume maybe Rousey's trying to stall there um, to put him at a point where he's using Giga Drain when he's not at full health. We finally see an attack into this Palisand. It goes to plus one on physical defense. It's going to get that weakness policy proc. Um, and it looks like uh, Chase, in this case, is really efficient for getting the most amount of turns of sleep. Um, because I think if that Palisand wakes back up and goes for a Giga Drain, it's going to be doing quite a bit. Yeah, pretty interesting to see here. This has been a long game, too, as the Milotic does Muddy Water uh, into Ralsei's side of the field, doing a lot of damage to the Palisand this time around and um, pretty reasonable damage to the Porygon 2. Yeah, um, I believe that Porygon 2 is now minus 2 accuracy, and the Palisand stays asleep. I, uh, given the Trick Room, it has another opportunity to wake up and, and Giga Drain. We are, I, this feels like we're watching some advanced uh, <laughs> stall end games. Oh, uh, I think we might have lost Nibs again slightly. We have got uh, the Porygon 2 going for recover, getting some of its health back. Um, my Lodic goes for another Muddy Water. This looks like it should be enough to finish off the Palisand, um, with Chase kind of fishing and getting lucky with that um, kind of maximum turns of sleep. So at this point, it is 1v1, and um, I believe the Porygon 2 has slightly less HP than the Milotic. If there's, there could be a timer win condition, but it's quite a bit of time left. I don't think that that Porygon 2 is really threatening any damage onto the Milotic. So Milotic's free just to continue to go for Muddy Waters um, and pick up some more damage. Um, let's see. It looks like Nibs, we might have still lost him. Um, uh, this looks like at this point that Porygon 2 is now at minus 3 on... No, minus 2 on accuracy. It switched out to cycle it. Um, Milotic here uh, in this position wants to have more HP than Porygon 2 if, if it feels like he can't knock it out. We have about three minutes left in game time, which um, is enough to stall, especially given the fact that Porygon 2 really can't do a whole lot of damage in the Milotic. Um, Milotic can kind of continue to, to heal up and, and chip away at damage on that Porygon 2. So I think what we're going to see here is Chase is going to take the maximum amount of time to make his decision. Um, so. Yep, welcome to the stall end game, ladies and gentlemen. Um, he's got about 30 seconds left. He's gonna wait right up until that two seconds left, and then he will go ahead and click his move um, with that muddy water. I'm gonna see if we can't get Nibs back in. Um, and if uh, Roller Costa, if you can hear me on the call, do you think you could try and ping Nibs um, to see if maybe his internet might have cut out? Um, but yeah, as we as we mentioned before here, waiting right until the end, uh, Chase able to stall out about a minute of that timer, um, and in exchange not taking really any damage, and it's going to go ahead and put that Porygon 2 to sleep, adding a little bit of insult to injury, um, not allowing the Porygon 2 to get a recover off. Um, in that position, it might have been slightly better for Razi to go for a recover. Um, I think that, regardless, Chase is in a better position in terms of Milotic's HP compared to Porygon 2's, um, because the way it works in VGC is if two Pokemon... Hey there, do we have Hello. Nibs back? Hello, I am back. Okay, uh, your video isn't I back, am upset but we... with not get Spectrum. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it looks like we are missing your, um, your video. My face. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna work on getting that, uh, as we kind of wrap up this game. It looks like Chase is just going to effectively be able to timer stall this game. Uh, he has 
over a minute and a half of his time with only 60 seconds left in the battle. He's just going to go for a recover right here, put himself at the highest HP. Looks like Razi just go ahead, went ahead and uh, canceled that um, battle uh, forfeiting. So that, uh, that takes the set 2-1 uh, with Chase. Um, what did you think about that, uh, Nibs? Hello. <laughs> sorry, sorry, my connection was being kind of goofy again. Um, I thought that that set was very fun to watch. It was very entertaining. Um, I thought that Rousey was super impressive there, to be honest with you. Um, he put Chase really far on his back foot, and um, honestly, Chase finds plays that I, I like never see. Like that mystical fire there, I would have never expected that. I would have never, I would have never done that if I was in Chase's um, shoes. Yeah, no, those uh, were some really interesting plays. Uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to try and uh, regroup for one second while I get um, Chase in for an interview, and then we will cut to our kind of closing thoughts and remarks. All right, guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, we have the interview here with uh, last last matchup winner uh, Chase, who just beat Rawlsy in what was... Pretty crazy, a little bit of a staller there. Uh, Chase, what are your thoughts? Uh, coming back from that first game, you, you fell back pretty hard. You had your back up against the wall, but you still found a way to turn things around and get that win. Yeah, I mean, I just want to start off with saying, like, I am so very sorry <laughs> that you, all of you through this watching it, and especially, like, having to play against Rozzy, having to deal with the plus two, plus two, plus two, plus one Milotic. Um, I can only imagine how annoying that was to see. But again, like, I guess where there's a Milotic, there's a way. Um, if you have Hypnosis and you have boosts, I guess there's a chance. So, I, got, I mean, I got really lucky game two with the, the sleep turns at the end. Um, getting the three turn sleep on the Pile of Sand after I propped its weakness policy. But um, well, I think that I probably have... shouldn't have brought Clean Clang game two after it didn't really do anything game one. I'm really curious, Chase. Uh, what were you thinking when you when you clicked um, Mystical Fire? Did you absolutely know that that was the right play, or? Um, so my thought was, I don't want to take a KO right now because I assumed that Marowak was in the back, so I didn't want to take any KOs, and I wanted to get Coil Boosts up first so I could deal with the Marowak. And Mystical Fire was my best option at not take doing a lot of damage, but also dropping their their damage output. So I was like, okay, let me Mystical Fire the uh, Palace in to get it back to neutral at least, eventually. Um, and at that point, I was, uh, even like clicking it into the Porygon, I got lucky. I didn't, I did not predict the ally switch. I was just like, Palace at neutral. I'm gonna get the Porygon to minus one now, and I ended up getting the Palace to minus one instead. Um, but my whole goal was just kind of stall out Trick Room, get the Milotic boosted up, and see what I could do from there. Yeah, that was very cool. Some really cool stuff. Um, yeah, so coming back in game two, how did you, how did you think to, uh, reconvene? Um, well, I knew that, I, I just want to say my turn one play is, like, what I think sealed it for me. Um, getting the Hatterene in without it getting taken all the way down to Sash and then getting the Expanding Force off, uh, kind of put the Marowak in a terrible position, which is all I really wanted to do because the Marowak can really out-damage my Lodic. Mm -hmm. Um, if I don't get the turns right when Trick Room's up. So my goal was to get the Hatterene in so I can do damage before it does anything and then start getting my coils off. Uh, just making it to where the, the Marowak can't uh, Dynamax really because you don't want to Dynamax it when it's at, in red and you can't really Poltergeist, uh, poltergeist my... Um, my Lodic. My Lodic because of the Psychic Seed. So I kind of just like forced a bad position there. Um, that I mean, that was kind of my idea. I was trying to put it into a position where there wasn't really an out with the Pokemon on the field. Yeah, so uh, at the end there, you just had Milotic against the world. Uh, what what kind of thought process were you going through um, with the water compaction Pokemon on the other side of the field who was also weakness policy and a trick room setter who was Porygon 2? Mm -hmm. uh, what what are you thinking there in that, in that situation? Um, so what I had to do was play it as safe as possible and only go for more offensive attacks on like the last two turns of trick room. So I would get like guaranteed like maybe three turns of attacks off was the goal um, because I could go first or go second, go second, then go first and then get my hypnosis off again. Um, so I just wanted to be more defensive with like recovers and things on the first couple of turns of Trick Room just to salt it out. 
But I mean, it all came down to me getting the three turn sleep on the palace end when I started attacking it. Because if I didn't get that, it would have put me a lot lower, and I would have had to maneuver the end game um, a lot more carefully. I would have had to uh, hypnosis earlier on the Porygon after the palace end was gone and recover. And even then, like if I got crit at one point in time by the palace end, it was just over. Yeah, cool, Chase. Um, well, very well played. Uh, very great, fun match between uh, yourself and Ralsei.